All right, everyone, today's video is going to be about the archery skill and the bow and arrow in Kingdom Come Deliverance. How best to use it, tips and tricks to aim better, hit your targets more often, how to raise it efficiently, etc, etc. Before we get really started on the information, I want to say one thing, and that is that this is a historically accurate game based on realism. It strives to fulfill a different role than a lot of other, you know, fantasy style uh, sandbox games would do. These bows, a lot of these bows, are war bows, and they're designed to deal maximum damage and to be used against living targets, in which case they need to have a very high draw strength. So picture me as a gamer on YouTube, thrown back into the Middle Ages a few years younger with spaghetti noodle arms trying to pull back a war bow that you know has a hundred pound draw strength. So there is a reason why your character at the very beginning of the game will be very bad at archery. In fact, he'll be terrible. It'll be very hard to hit your targets. You have to train through repetition. There are a few ways around that a little bit, but mostly you need to train through repetition, firing a lot of arrows, um, and that's how you'll improve the best at archery. Now that we've said that, let's talk about a couple of other things that are useful to know. Number one, you need to look at the stats on the bow. For instance, I have this Ash Longbow. If we take a look and we hit the item info button, we can see that the Longbow is the best and deadliest weapon medieval bowmakers came up with, uh, but not just anyone is able to handle one. Most of all, it needs a strong, steady arm. So the minimum strength on this bow is 13 and the minimum agility is seven. That, that's quite a high stat number. Honestly, 13 strength is very high. That's not something you're going to have for a large chunk of the early game. So if you are equipping this bow very early on and you don't meet these stat requirements, the bow is going to flail all over the place. You will be able to slot it, you'll be able to use it, but you won't be able to use it correctly or efficiently. So a lot of players are putting on a bow that is far outside their expertise, and then they're wondering why they suck at archery and why they can't hit any targets. Further down the list, we have this Capon's Hunting Bow. This is a bow that you'll get very early on and as you can see it has significantly lower requirements minimum strength of five minimum agility of five and you'll be able to control this bow much sooner and thus it's a more friendly beginner bow so taking a look at the bow that you're trying to use and the stats on that bow is number one for figuring out how to hit your target more efficiently the second tip I have is a marker or a crosshair or a reticle of some kind. Now, before going any further, if you are on PC, I've put a link down in the description below, which will allow you to get the dot that you have while you're running around the world, just, you know, talking to NPCs and doing various tasks. That dot in the center of your screen, you can keep that active while using a bow, which gives you a non-invasive rudimentary crosshair of sorts if you do use this mod. So this, again, is only for PC players. If you're on Xbox or PS4, you're not able to do this, but for PC players, you can get the dot in the center of your screen, giving you a crosshair, and there's a link down in the description below. For all other players, there's a pretty simple tip if you're trying to have a crosshair, you're gonna be doing a lot of bow activities, um, and you really want to have that added advantage, you can just put a tiny piece of tape in the center of the screen, or actually in a very specific location, just one second, we'll get to that though. Uh, you can put a tiny piece of tape or a mark on your screen, which will then serve as a crosshair just as efficiently. So if you don't want to do that, you don't wanna break the immersion or use you know tricks like that, then be my guest. Uh, but for anyone interested, a very small dot on the physical screen itself can serve as just as, just as an efficient of a crosshair uh, as anything else that you could download or get. For where to put that marker or that crosshair, we're going to have to take a freeze frame here and show where the arrow goes. So when you draw back the bow, there's a very specific animation that happens. He does a, a large draw at first, and then he kind of does a secondary, much smaller draw period in which he like slots the arrow into place kind of. Um, and the arrow is then going to fire after that has happened. You can see it happening right now in slow motion. After that has happened, the arrow will fire right about here. Uh, and in this instance, it's going to fire a little bit up into the left slightly of Henry's hand. So you can put a dot there or a marker, like I said, and that will be your crosshair. It's not always going to fire there. If you are walking, if you're moving back and forth, then the reticle will move and the arrow is going to be inaccurate. If you're standing still, though, you'll the arrow will pretty much fire in this location. The idea is essentially to draw and fire in one clean motion. If you are drawing all the way back, a bow will consume stamina while you're aiming down sights, and the bow will then, while you are fully drawn, sway back and forth on a horizontal plane a pretty large amount. 
Um, you can unslot the arrow by pressing A or whatever corresponding button on PC or PS4. Um, and you don't necessarily want to keep the arrow drawn that whole time. If you draw it all the way back and your target moves and walks away, if you're hunting an animal or a bandit, you know, changes position uh, and trying to get the jump on him, then you can unslot the arrow and then redraw later on, going for that perfect motion. Because the ideal way to fire a bow is to slot the arrow, knock the arrow, pull it all the way back, and then release right as it hits its climax, and it will then fire perfectly accurate to this dot on the screen. Another thing to look out for is other status effects that will impact how well you can fire a bow. Um, in the footage, in the background, in just a couple of seconds, you'll be able to see it. Uh, I am tired. My character is very tired. And that results in him sometimes yawning or some kind of animation, which makes his, the character, Henry, look up into the air and then come back down. So if you are hungry or tired or have various other status effects active on your character, detrimental ones, this will impact the way that you shoot a bow. Now, the thing about the bow is that it's an underutilized skill. You're not going to be gaining that much experience for many other areas when you're using the bow. Uh, you're not going to have an incentive to use it all that often, especially because of how difficult it is early on in the game. But once you do level it up, you'll be able to take down targets from range as long as your character is healthy uh, and there's no other status effects impacting him and you kind of sneak up on a target if they're stationary. You can take them down from range, which can level the, the playing field and level the odds in a lot of encounters. The last bit of information I have is a supplement supplementary way to level the bow's experience. Uh, since a bow is not going to gain experience when you're shooting at an inanimate object, you do need to be shooting live targets with this, and there's not as easy of a way when compared to sword fighting, the previous video that I did, to train it up very quickly. Um, there is one other tip that I have, and that's Huntsman uh, Ber Berthold, Ber Berthold? Uh, in Rate. So if I go to the map here, I'll show you his exact location. If you go to him, he's in the upper courtyard here, the Huntsman. Uh, you talk to him if you're in good standing and you're able to talk to him and you're, you haven't pissed off the townspeople and they're not mad at you. Um, and they will, you know, interact with you. Then you can go down to training. You can select bow and he will give you various options for various different level brackets. You can train, uh, you know, there's beginner before this, but I've already done that. You can then do slightly advanced, advanced and master. And this will give you varying amounts of experience to your bow skill. It does require some coin and it is a one-off. You can't consistently do this to just cheese the level to an extremely high uh, amount but what you can do is get these in various increments if you're very close to a level and you're level you know nine almost ten you can get the slightly advanced training which will push you over the top you do need to meet that level requirement first and again it's not that efficient but it's one supplementary way to gain a bit of experience and not be forced to use the bow as often but still level it up Lastly, there are a couple of skills that interact with the bow and arrow, not in a direct way, but they make it more lucrative to use the bow and arrow for hunting, for instance. In the hunting tree, you can go down to antlers, tanner, tusks, butcher. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can get, which will then increase the amount of coin gain that you get while training hunting out in the woods against animals. And like we discussed earlier, uh, you can't train on inanimate target objects. You should be training against live targets because you're not going to gain a, a meaningful amount of experience from shooting something in an archery range. Uh, you can't compete in archery competitions. You can win some coin there. But the best way to train is against live animals uh, and select a couple of hunting talents that will make it more lucrative. That's going to pretty much wrap it up though. I know that this wasn't quite as helpful as the sword fighting guide that had a lot more tangible results when it came to leveling quickly um, and maybe, you know, gave more information about combos, etc. because the bow is a less utilized skill and a less utilized weapon type. Everyone uses a sword or a mace or some kind of physical melee weapon. Not that many people are using the bow specifically because of how difficult it is early on, but it can pay off. So stick with it. And again, over time, as you progress, not only your bow, but your strength skill, your agility skill, uh, and various other masteries, you will then become a more efficient archer. So stick with it. It really isn't as bad as it seems at first. The game does feel extremely clunky at first, and it's received a lot of criticisms for that, but it's not quite as clunky. It's just that your character is inexperienced. But again, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you for watching. If you have feedback on this game or, you know, future games that you'd like me to cover, different types of content that you want me to do, I'm very open to that right now. I'm trying to expand my horizons. Also, check out the Patreon page. YouTube is unreliable at this point for advancing projects. So if you want to support community development of Upper Echelon LLC, uh, then check out the Patreon page if you are, you know, willing to go down that route for a couple of different incentive programs. Now, that's about it. Check out the other communities too. We have the website, the forums, we have the Facebook group, but I'll stop rambling now. As always, guys, thank you for watching and have a nice night.